It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice right here, right now, this morning. We are going to cover a uh, a broad swath of our... uh, national issues this morning, but um, I got to tell you, it's going to be an interesting day. (laughs) Thanks for joining with us. Uh, If you're joining us live on our website, great to have you out there at americasvoicenow.org. See a ton of you out there, Muncie, Baltimore, uh, of course, folks out out here in West Plains in our home area, Clarksville, I see uh, Mission Viejo, I see uh, Florida out there, uh, Upper Midwest, I see Seattle out there, Spokane, Lakewood, I see Maine out there. Glad to have you all. Uh, If you haven't had an opportunity to visit with us before on our website, please feel free to do that. It's americasvoicenow.org. Our broadcast also plays uh, on radio on 99.3, Big Country 99, in the uh, heart of the Ozarks, uh, broadcasting out of Houston, Missouri. Covers a broad swath of area. You can find them at 99.3 on your FM dial if you're in the broadcast area. Uh, in addition to that, we broadcast out on uh, Patriot FB, on Patriot FB Radio, FB as in Facebook or Foxtrot Bravo, depending upon your uh, military experience. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, we also, uh, we also uh, cooperate with a bunch of other websites that uh, uh, carry our information and our, and our podcasting and so forth, including the Constitution Club. <clears throat> I encourage you to join with the Constitution Club and Patriot FB. Um, also the CAN network, you know, the, the constitution club has an interesting project where they've got, uh, a group of mini websites set up for every County in the country. And so by joining the constitution club dot N I N G dot com, you are able to, uh, essentially find a localized website for your County. And if you're the first to sign up, great. There's 3,300 counties in the country, folks. So we're going to talk about a couple of different things this morning, and um, not the least of which is there's breaking news out there about the Bundys filing a lawsuit, and um, this is going to be handled by Larry Clayman. Uh, Larry Clayman, if you're not familiar with him, or you probably have heard his name, but you can't quite put a finger on where you've heard him. Uh, Larry Clayman was the guy who filed the NSA lawsuit about the violation of our Fourth Amendment rights uh, for privacy, and... Uh, there are uh, seven specific uh, issues that they're going to be looking at uh, in regard to this. We're going to go over those in just a moment. This is breaking news, and we're glad to uh, bring it to you ASAP this morning. Our secondary topic this morning will be a, uh, a broadcast from Judge Napolitano that was done on Hannity's program. And i got to tell you, for the first time, I've actually heard the words that all federal land ownership is unconstitutional. The first time I've heard that in the mainstream media, the Ministry of Propaganda is famous for only giving you the parts of a story or the the, the information they want you to hear. And in this case, Hannity came through and Judge Napolitano called it exactly like it was. He was discussing, or they were discussing in this particular segment, uh, the outrageous eminent domain cases that have been exposed over the over time, and towards the tail end of it, and I'm going to let you hear the entire 10-minute segment, so you're going to have to just look at my face if you're watching on video or if you listen on podcast. I'll, I'll give you some uh, volume on it. The, for the first time, Napolitano came right out and called it, and he nailed it right on the head. He said, all federal land ownership is unconstitutional because there is no provision in the Constitution for the federal government to own the vast swaths of land that they own under national parks and Bureau of Land Management and USDA and all these other various unconstitutional, unelected, unaccountable, three-letter curse words. I mean, uh, government administrative agencies. By the way, for the record, 
I'm more offended by a three-letter agency than I am by a four-letter curse word. Um, you know, I'm not one of those people that gets all bent. In fact, my language is, you know, off air is probably not as good as it ought to be. But, you know, when I hear a three-letter agency, I cringe and it's, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard to me. Because to me, that is a far more offensive phrase or term than any kind of curse word you can come up with. I've heard all of those. But when, and they don't turn my stomach like the three letter agencies do. Our third topic is going to be a groundbreaking and, and ex, this is going to be a, 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 a globe rocking story, but it's interesting that it is only uh, being published here on the Daily Mail UK. <laughs> and it's basically a, uh, the Citizens Commission on Benghazi has come right out. And, and this is a group, an independent group, we're going to get into the heavy details of it because it's very important, that Benghazi was not only preventable, but that it was an open act of treason because the White House, the Department of State, and perhaps even as far as Congress, and definitely the Pentagon, knew that it was about a half a billion dollar weapon deal that went to the hands of Al-Qaeda. And they knew it, that was aiding and abetting the enemy, and it is an act of treason. Boom. Now, they're calling for an open commission, a special commission that will review the uh, and, and have subpoena power to subpoena these individuals that were involved in this. And they made this announcement the other day at the National Press Club. We're going to talk about it. It is a very, very, very powerful segment. So do not miss it. Our fourth topic, the Louisiana government is creating a citizen database of people who are a risk to the state. You're kidding, right? No, I'm not. They are actually creating a database of people that they classify as a risk to the state. And down the road, these are they want to detect fraud. That was the original premise for the creation of this database. And to identify people who are a risk to the state down the road based upon the information we know about the individual an individual who is going to be at risk of incarceration down the road. And I got to tell you, folks, this is exactly the fear that I've been talking about with the NSA databases that are being built. If the state of Louisiana can do this, you can imagine what the federal government is doing. And this is the core and the crux of the main core databases that are being built. That and Every, uh, like the, the folks over there at the Bundy Ranch, the, they came out with an article the other day that the militia is fearing infiltration by uh, feds at the Bundy Ranch. And they should be, because I guarantee you that the federal agents are all over not only that particular incident and that, that issue, but every militia in the nation, every small organization, every group, they're, they're infiltrating everywhere, and they are definitely building enemy lists, and you are likely on them. Let's break this first story this morning on a Bundy Ranch. I received a, uh, a, a um, press release the other day, and uh, attorney Larry Clayman, working closely with the Bundy family, will announce to the world what future action will be taken in the now infamous BLM standoff at the Bundy Ranch. They are exploring their legal options, including lawsuits and the legal remedies available to the Bundy family on behalf of we, the American people. Their questions are basically seven. Was Sheriff Gillespie grossly negligent or at least negligent in a reckless way during the Bundy standoff? Was Sheriff Douglas Gillespie in violation of his oath of office? And did he violate the trust of the people who voted him in office? Did Sheriff Gillespie put lives in danger as a result of his alleged gross negligence and unconstitutional conduct? The second topic, was Special Agent Daniel Love grossly negligent or at least negligent in a reckless way during the time leading up to as well as the Bundy Ranch standoff? Did, Shara, did Daniel P. Love, Special Agent in charge, he's also, by the way, an ex-spec uh, 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 ops guy, uh, inform Gillespie that the BLM was going to stand down, release the cattle uh, and the land which he had unconstitutionally seized under the authority of a fraudulently obtained court order. Did Daniel Love evade and, and, and impede a law enforcement investigation initiated by local residents in Bunkerville, Nevada, when they had reason to believe the BLM was allegedly killing cattle and maliciously destroying private property owned by the Bundy family? 
Three, did Daniel Love personally benefit from issuing no-bid contracts to Utah cattlemen who were hired by the BLM for the specific purpose of stealing cattle from the Bundy family? Four, is the BLM a private corporation or a government agency? If the BLM is a privately held organization, do they have the power of arrest or to use deadly force or the use of AR-15s and other lethal weapons against peaceful American citizens? Five, can the U.S. government be restrained or can an injunction be obtained prohibiting them from taking any further action against the American people, particularly the Bundys, before a complete and thorough investigation is completed? Six, can a formal legal investigation be conducted to review possible evidence and to hold Sheriff Douglas Gillespie and Daniel Love legally accountable, as well as and others who may have committed crimes and violated the rows of office? If so, can citizens make arrests once indictments have been issued and served? And then seven, should Harry Reid and his son Rory be investigated and tried under the Racketeering Influence and Corruption Act, or RICO, are the threats from Harry Reid and his son related to their possible attempts to profit from removing the Bundys from the, land, from the disputed land? And does this rise to the level of civil RICO liability? They're addressing these questions <clears throat> to the, um, to the uh, local uh, legislative uh, groups out there, their representatives, after uh, they met with Larry Klayman and Assemblywoman Michelle Fiore, who I played you or, or I posted a, an art, a video up with her the other day talking on MSLSD in which she blew that knucklehead out of the water uh, who was trying to demonize the uh, the folks over there. The um, The issue here is that uh, Clayman, and if you're not familiar with him, he was the guy, again, he's the former chairman of Judicial Watch, which is a uh, public interest and a nonprofit law firm, and uh, they were the ones who uh, filed the uh, lately latest, uh, the NSA lawsuit uh, against Fourth Amendment violations which I believe is still winning its way through the courts. Um, he's also created the organization called Freedom Watch, which protects civil liberties and rights of all persons, whatever their ethnicity, race, religion, sex, or otherwise. And uh, <clears throat> he's also wrote, written a number of books. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clayman is also representing the families of Navy SEAL Team 6 um, and the, uh, the, the, where they, their helicopter was shot down. And... Um, Assemblywoman Michelle Fiore represents Clark County Assembly District 4, and, and that's, this, of course, is her, uh, is her, her, her uh, legislative area. So basically what this comes down to is that they are claiming here that they, they have been deemed as uh, domestic terrorists in a statement by Senate Leader Harry Reid. And uh, what exactly does that mean? Well, according to the Patriot Act in Section 802 of the U.S. Patriot Act, they expanded in that act, the definition of patriotism to cover domestic as well as international terrorism. A quote, and they define it as such, a person engages in domestic terrorism if they do an act, quote, dangerous to human life. That is a violation of the criminal laws of a state or the United States. If the act appears intended to, one, intimidate or coerce a civilian population. That would put the BLM as, the, as based on their definition, guilty of domestic terrorism, ladies and gentlemen. There, the second uh, would be if the act appears intended to influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion, or three, to affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction, assassination, or kidnapping. Additionally, the acts have to occur primarily within the jurisdictional uh, territorial jurisdiction of the United States, and if they do not, they, be, they may be regarded as international terrorism. Now, let's, let's take this one step further. Under the National Defense Authorization Act, you can be grabbed and picked up as an um, a, 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 a indeterminate detainee for an indefinite period of time based on a belligerent act. Would the Bundy Ranch issues be construed to be a belligerent act? We don't know. And the reason we don't know is because under the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, when you're picked up, you are prohibited from having a habeas corpus hearing or having access to legal counsel. So you can actually never get in front of a court to say, Your Honor, please define for me what act I committed that was belligerent and define what constitutes a belligerent act so that the world can understand one, what can we be held accountable for? In other words, you don't even know what a belligerent act is. Is it spitting on a sidewalk or is it slapping a senator? 
Is it standing there in a protest zone and refusing to stand inside the boundaries of a free speech zone, a First Amendment box? We don't know. The the Bundy family secretary has, has put together a list of questions. Who had the guns pointed at whom? In other words, would that be an act of domestic terrorism based on the fact that the BLM had 200 officers there who were fully armed and utilizing those weapons, uh, pointing them at civilians? If so, and of course, doesn't that immediately qualify as an act under the Patriot Act to intimidate or coerce a civilian population? Absolutely it does. Just because the act is by government should not disqualify it from being construed as domestic terrorism. I mean, let's be honest. Is that not the case? Now, they also ask about kidnapping because the second or the third point in the uh, definition of the USA Patriot Act is an act that appears to be intended to uh, three to affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction, assassination or kidnapping. Well, the question was the son David was arrested and taken to jail overnight. He was beaten up and he was dirty and he'd been injured. Then he was taken to a federal court to see a judge. But after a few hours of waiting to see the judge, suddenly they came into the room, handed him two citations, unchained him, and released him through the door, kicked him out. So was that considered, or could that be construed as an act of kidnapping? I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I'm not an attorney. Uh, to be frank with you, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm certainly not qualified to answer that question. But the the real point here, folks, is that what we have to do is begin to use the definitions that the courts themselves and their own laws, which have been passed, uh, quite frankly, unconstitutionally, should be uh, utilized against them. The truth of the matter is what we're seeing here are not only blatant belligerent acts, but acts of open treason against Americans. Because when you are sitting there and you are pointing weapons at Americans over a debt, a financial debt, and you're, you're intimidating people and threatening prison time, that's debtor's prison. We fought a revolutionary war over that. The truth of the matter is what we have is a, is a federal government that is completely, totally, and utterly out of control. And it's not limited just to the BLM. It's not limited to the National Park Service. It's not limited to the USDA. By the way, the FCC is coming out with net neutrality all over again. It's not limited to the EPA. It's there. The, the, the list, ladies and gentlemen, is as long as the list of the unconstitutional administrative agencies that exist. They have no constitutional authority to exist. Nowhere ever did we give. And I'd love to have Judge Napolitano and I have a discussion about this because nowhere did we ever grant a power of attorney to Congress that said, you can subdelegate this power of attorney to other unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats who, number one, never take an oath of office, and number two, don't have any accountability to, to we the people. We can't choose them. We can't elect them or unelect them. And therefore, they have placed us in a position in which they have breached our trust and breached our contract. The contract was, we give you limited power of attorney to act on our behalf but only to act on our behalf, never to act against our best interest. Any attorney can look at that. A first-year pre-law student can look at that and say, Congress has blatantly, openly, and aggressively violated the basic tenets of jurisprudence. End of argument, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you'll never get a court to honor that. Why? Well, the simple truth is the courts work for the same government that is betraying you. The courts work for the same government that is unconstitutionally stripping you every day of your First Amendment right to redress your grievances with your government, to your free speech rights, to your ability to worship in the way and manner in which you choose, your Second Amendment right to defend yourself, to protect yourself and your family, and frankly, to defend your nation against the tyranny that they represent. Your Third Amendment right now, and a lot of people, by the way, don't realize how, how deep the Third Amendment goes. We really need to have an, an entire program on that. Your Fourth Amendment right against unlawful search and seizure and the violation of your privacy, which is inherent. The word privacy never appears, but it is inherent. Your Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. How do I know that? Everybody who's visited the Obamacare website and was forced to sign up in that matter, in that manner was forced to give up 
their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination because hidden in the code, secretly, secretly hidden in the code was the phrase that states that by the use of this system, you're acknowledging that your information and anything that you submit to the federal government can be used for investigation, audit purposes, and prosecution. So you are forced by one law to, to waive your Fifth Amendment right and your Fourth Amendment right to your privacy and against unlawful search and seizure. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, th this is the pattern that we have taken. Your Sixth Amendment right for a jury, for a tr a, a jury trial by your peers. Go to any administrative agency, and you have no jury trial by your peers. You are simply heard by a judge who happens to work for the agency, and lo and behold, amazingly enough, virtually every time they find on behalf of the agency. Isn't that stunning? You see, the point here, ladies and gentlemen, is that our rights have been stripped away from us. And let's not forget our Tenth Amendment right, which is not only a right inherent to the individual people of the country, and do we, the people, the consent of the governed, but also your states themselves as entities and the guaranteed Republican form of government that was given to every state as a, as a, a limit against federal overreach. Now, it was given to each state by themselves or reserved, I should say. It's probably a better phrase. Each state reserved in the Tenth Amendment the right to withdraw from the, the federal government the ability for them to impact those states because it says anything not delineated specifically in this Constitution by the states to the federal government and by the people is reserved to the states or respectively to the people themselves. So the states themselves, all 50 of them, have the right to stand up and say, we are entities just like individuals, and our rights have been usurped. Now, they've been bribed into waiving their right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an act of treason as well. The problem is that we have a federal government that needs to be completely stripped and disbanded and rebuilt from the ground up. And nothing short of that will do. Every member, every participant, every agency, every employee, every judge, Every member of Congress, every administrative agency person, every administration person, whether they are cabinet members all the way down to all of the committees that participate, all need to be removed, labeled dishonorably discharged, permanently barred and prohibited from ever having access to politics again, and then we begin over again. You've been listening to America's Voice Now. We're going to take a brief break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano and his, dis his blatant open statement. All federal land ownership is unconstitutional, and there is no authority within the Constitution for the federal government to own and possess land outside of some very, very exclusive and limited areas for forts, magazines, and, and um, outside of the 10 square miles of Washington, D.C. itself which is ceded to the federal government. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing else. No land ownership. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to America's Voice Now. Find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org. Communicate with me directly by email at mike at americasvoicenow.org. Share our videos, and please, if you can visit our website and donate to us, we'd be very grateful. Hang on a second. We'll be right back. <laughs> 